Hey everybody, I am going to be making a passport size leather folder and I, I have shown this in my previous passport traveler's notebook setup video so I will have that linked below but I filmed myself making this and just be warned this is not a tutorial at all it's more of my process because I haven't made this before this was my first time and I cut a lot of corners and it'll show I'll show you all my mistakes and everything I made that template out of some scrapbook paper just to give myself an idea of the shape and um, like where all the folds needed to be and I traced it out on that leather and this piece of fabric and I traced it out really roughly it, it was just a guide for me so I would know how far to spread out the glue so here's here's my first mistake I decided to use this barge contact cement leather cement and it was it was the wrong thing to use but I, I kind of put myself in a hole with this project because I refused to buy anything to make this folder I just wanted to use what I had because I wanted to buy a leather folder and I'll put that photo up on the screen here and I finally convinced myself I need to just go ahead and try to make this myself because I am trying to be a bit more conscientious about my spending and I knew I had like the bare minimum amount of tools to be able to kind of make this happen so I will have everything linked below the leather I'm using um, don't use this contact cement for this project I I will link a a video that I saw and it was a it was a man that made uh, like a fabric lining to go on his leather and he used a spray adhesive now I don't know how well that spray adhesive holds over time but this barge cement it will actually it has a permanent adhesion whether you stitch it or not if something's stuck together with this it's gonna stay together forever which is kind of why I also wanted to go with it but it bled through this fabric and I don't know why I thought I would be the, the one that didn't happen to but you can see how splotchy it is and I went ahead and just went for it I almost scrapped this whole thing but I think the print is busy enough that it hides uh, the splotchiness and then when I do fold the edges in there's not that much of the fabric that's visible anyway so I just went ahead with it once you put down the contact cement it has to dry and then you smush both pieces together and I rolled it uh, to make sure it had really good contact and then I'm going to use my template to score out the shape on the leather side and then I'll actually make my cuts my head and messy hair are gonna make some cameos uh, in these parts coming up but it's super difficult to get in the groove with a project and make sure your visuals are all good on a video this clear ruler has been the best purchase I've made this year as far as leather crafting goes I bought it earlier this year I think at like Joanne and they were having a really big sale and I've always wanted one of these I just never actually took the plunge and it has made my life so much easier when I'm leather crafting because I can be less precise about the measurements in my templates and I can just use this with all of its line guides on top of the mat my cutting mat that has all the line guides and it it makes the process go so much faster and I can be more accurate and I, I can obviously cut bigger pieces over using a regular 12 inch metal ruler which is what I have used up until this point uh, the one with the cork backing 
which is a phenomenal tool to have, but when you wanna work on a larger scale, this is the most handy thing ever. So hi highly recommend that if you don't already have one of those and you like to work with leather, hopefully not as amateurish as, as I am. But uh, this part with my X-Acto knife, I really need a straight edge because it's my understanding that like a box cutter straight edge type of tool is it has a thicker more rigid blade and every time I use my X-Acto knife the blade will bend and curve and give me a crooked line uh, a crooked cut and that's what happened here but I knew it might happen and I wasn't worried about it so I did it anyway because I'm going to use my arc shaped chisel to round those two points at the top anyway that's that's what i'm doing here i just picked the smallest one from the pack that is my favorite size in this full pack i've used these chisels so much these are what i use to round the corners in all of my creations all of the traveler's notebooks and folios etc so it made a really nice curve at the top um, on both of those points and hid the messy line that that exacto knife gave me. Right here, I'm just smoothing out those last corners that were a little bit sharp and pokey, and I wanted to get those a little bit smoother. So I used my exacto knife for that. It was fine for that. Uh, you know, I would not recommend this thickness of leather for this type of project. This is very, very thinned down. Uh, I have it listed in the description, but I believe it's like the, the one and a half to two ounce uh, that I had it split down to. But I believe there's actually an option to get it split down even thinner than that. And I would just take the thinnest option um, because I, I found this to be a wee bit too thick. It works well for what I'm using it for, but just for general purposes, like if I made this for anybody, I would totally not use this thickness. I would thin it down even more. I think it has to do with that fabric lining. It just adds this, it adds more thickness to it, but it's not like the fabric itself was not that thick. So I'm not sure what happened there. It's probably the glue and everything combined. Um, but I made this because I wanted it to take up some space in my traveler's notebook setup. And it does that beautifully. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out. But if I made this again, I would go for the thinner leather. But again, I'm not gonna buy stuff just for the sake of a project that I've never done before. So what I, I normally do is every like year and a half to maybe two years, I will buy an entire hide of Maverick leather and then either a half a hide or a full hide of this. It's the Wicked and Craig glazed harness leather, which is also the Austin or Mr. Darcy leather that Chic Sparrow uses. I love the combination of those two leathers together. I typically use this leather as a as my inside pockets when I make Maverick covers so um, I that's why I just I wanted to use what I had because I have these massive hides and when I buy both of these leathers you know in a large amount like that it costs around three hundred dollars and it's a lot of leather and I make I make so many notebooks and like little projects and stuff like this out of it and I mean you can just buy two fully made leather covers and it already costs $300 just for that but I get like a ton of projects out out of those leathers and it's awesome to just have them on hand because uh, whenever I get an idea 
or I want to buy something and um, I'm trying to convince myself to save money, then I can just dive into my stash, pull out my leathers, and get to work on a project. So I really like creating this way. I'm I'm not much of an artist in the way of like using paints and things like that. Um, I like to make and craft items that can be used um, in the future. I don't mean that to sound negative because um, I totally don't mean it that way, but I like constructing and crafting items um, that have a specific use. So this is just like another way that I enjoy my, um, this whole hobby of journaling and stuff because I make all this stuff for my journals. I totally scorched the uh, leather right here. You can see it's dark and I don't, I don't know how to, how to master that because I get so worried that the cut ends are going to like hang and they really need to be smushed down like that, like nice and tight and like perfect circles is always what I try to go for. And I end up getting like way too close and I scorch the leather. It, it hides much better in, on Maverick leather because there's so much going on on that leather as far as texture goes. Uh, but this kind of smooth, beautiful leather, it shows everything. So you can kind of see that, but whatever, I shrugged it off. And right here, I. I was basically like, ah, oh, crap, because it's so big. I made it way too wide and I was like, huh, how did that happen? Because I really thought I made my template. Um, I modeled it after that zipper case right there, the Traveler's Company zip pouch. I thought I had made it exactly that size, but I didn't. I don't know, it fell off somewhere in my process. I put it around two here and I was like, well, I guess that's good. Um, it'll go around two. And I left it like that for a second. And then this is what always happens. I always end up going back to something I've decorated or um, a project or something. And I start like tweaking it and fine tuning it in some way. And I ended up cutting notches at the top and the bottom. Uh, so that it would fit around the strings a little bit better um, because it's a wee bit tall but still okay and I was mostly just worried about the fabric I didn't know how that was gonna take being rubbed up with um, like against the elastics um, so far so good I've been using it for about a week or so now um, and it's held up fine and what I ended up doing is putting it around my last three paper inserts because it is very generously sized and fits around all three of those and I actually really love how it turned out. I put my blotter paper in there and uh, I might get a pencil board at some point that I'll store on the other side but that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all again soon. Bye everybody.